Thanks everybody for joining. Really appreciate you uh, giving us the uh, the attention um, that uh, I, you know. We know you love Synology products, so uh, we've got about forty five. It looks like in the audience. Um, I am Dave Russ, and I am joined by Dustin Kuntz. Dustin uh, is a product manager here, so he's going to provide a lot of the uh, kind of product expertise, and I am going to uh, hopefully provide some uh, product expertise, but um, I'm also going to be very um, focused on the software, focused on um, making sure that you know um, kind of what um, backup for M365 can do, uh, as well as recovery. So we're going to have just a quick five minute little presentation talk about some of those things and then we're going to move on we're we want to engage with you that's really the the focus of this entire thing so if you do already have questions lined up for us feel free to write those in the q a section right now if you think of questions as we are talking about different things feel free to add your questions in at a later point so for those of you who don't know about synology um just quick at a glance we provide data storage, we provide backup, um, as well as a ton of other features. It's, you know, we're, we're going to kind of keep it focused on data storage and, and backup for most of what we talk about today, um, but we do a ton of other things. Feel free to, to check out Synology.com to get an overview of all of that. Um, and we really provide a unified hardware and software experience. So we actually started out as a software company creating operating systems for storage devices. And we sort of adapted a few years later into providing that more unified experience between the hardware and the software. So that really is our focus, you know, usable, uh, usable storage and a very good user experience overall. So this is a, a great quote from a technology director at a public school district uh, in the Southeast US. Uh, they said, our data is always at risk from various sources. Tornadoes happen regularly, which could destroy our servers and school. Cyber attacks often target schools like ours. And we have thousands of students who want to hack into our systems to change their grades. So it, this really highlights the multitude of different things that can go wrong, right? From users, whether it is by accident or malicious, um, to natural disasters, um, to ransomware or, or some type of cyber attacks. So it's, it's really important to be prepared with backups and disaster recovery plans. So let me talk about one vocational college that actually currently is using Synology products um, with Microsoft 365, making sure that they back up that information. So they have uh, 18,000 active students and 1,000 faculty members. And they kind of realized that they were using Microsoft 365 more than they have in the past because of all of the uh, remote schooling and remote work uh, from the faculty. So they needed to back up a total of 60,000 email accounts, 30,000 OneDrive accounts, and 10,000 uh, SharePoint sites. And you, you can tell that there's a, a difference in the, the numbers there. And that is because they had to back up previous students as well, as well as previous faculty. Um, so they needed a ton of storage and even, you know, with their 18,000 students and 1,000 faculty active, you know, that's a, that's a lot of people that they needed to uh, keep all that information for and, and actively back up uh, on a daily basis, all of that info. And so uh, once again, this really helped them because they were using M365 uh, because there was so much remote work and learning. And they actually had to keep that information. I, I believe it was legally they needed to keep um, both the current and the former student data um, just in case something happened with a, a former student. And they needed to fill gaps in their data retention policy. You know, they essentially they realized just using Microsoft 365, that's not that's not backing things up. You know, it's 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 probably safe up there on M365. But if you don't have it backed up and something gets deleted, then you, you have nothing to go off of. You could just lose a file uh, forever, potentially. So 
I want to talk a little bit about Microsoft and, and basically what I just said, which is the responsibility is yours to back up your data. Microsoft specifically says, hey, we're going to keep up M365 as a service. That's going to be available for you, as you can see on, on this matrix here. Um, but the information and the data on M365, that's up to you. Um, so it, it really is your responsibility to, to do that. And I want to highlight something for, from their terms of service. They say, we recommend that you regularly back up your content and data that you store on the services or store using third-party apps and services. So, so we are the third-party apps and services as far as Microsoft is concerned. Uh, and we already got a, a great question here. How much data are we talking about? So thank you for that, for that question, Joe. Um, and I'll just jump in and say, we can store over a petabyte of data. So essentially, no matter how much data you're actually using, we have a way to store that amount of data. Um, if you've got more than a petabyte, get in contact with us. You know, we can absolutely uh, chat with you about that, about how we can handle um, even more than a petabyte. Uh, but from the small, you know, two terabyte situations all the way up to over a petabyte, we've got you covered. So let's talk about potential issues that M365 Backup is really protecting against. So one of them is accidental deletion. Once again, users can be the bane of an IT team's existence. And this is really how you're protecting against that. You're backing up the data. If somebody deletes something, if somebody edits something, you're still gonna be covered. Recovery speed is a huge thing. So having a, especially a local backup of your M365 data makes it much faster if you do ever need to recover all of that information. And service downtime. So, you know, imagine you have uh, an internet outage, but your users can still, um, they still have access to your local network. You can absolutely uh, still make use of all of the data that you've backed up if that were to happen. Uh, and I'm just gonna uh, tr try and quickly wrap this up so we can get to more of your questions. Um, but I wanna talk about some things here. Um, there, there's multiple different ways where you can back up this M365 data. So you could have a cloud backup uh, where you're going M365 to a different cloud service. Um, and there are some benefits to that, right? You, you don't have hardware maintenance. You don't have to manage a Synology device. Um, and with the cloud, you can easily scale. You just have to pay them more money and, and you know, they're happy to, to scale out that data. With cloud to local, like with the Synology device, you're not going to have to pay those subscription fees. I mean, I mentioned specifically that, you know, you're just going to have to pay more for that data. Whereas if you do get a local device, yeah, you might have to buy more hard drives to store more data, but you're not going to have to pay for the Synology software and, and pay for that service. So there's no license costs either. Um, and then you've got better access. Once again, we talked about maybe an internet outage or something like that. Uh, and you've got privacy control. You're, we like to say you're owning your own data, right? You don't have to rely on a third party cloud vendor because you've got everything locally. Um, uh, so so I, I can just say here real quick, you know, obviously that vocational college did end up, uh, they actually used a, um, a 12 bay uh, rack unit in order to back up all of that M365 data. So active backup for Microsoft 365 is the actual software that you would be using to back up all of this information. So this is a local backup for your OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Exchange Online information. So let's get into that questions and discussion section. So, um, Maybe we'll take a few questions and then we'll get into some of the questions uh, that we have. I think I saw a couple of questions come through. Uh, let me see if I can actually throw it over to Dustin. Um, and uh, Joe actually had, a, had another question and he was asking about throttling from M365. Can, can you talk about that, Dustin, and, and whether that's a, a problem to be wary about? Sure. Uh, so we don't have any 
specific throttling features for this particular application, but you can schedule your backup. So you get a couple of different backup options. You could do a continuous backup. So that's whenever there is a change on the Microsoft 365 side, it'll go ahead and bring that down to your Synology NAS server. Um, or you can just schedule the backup. So if you are worried about bandwidth, you know, run it from you know 8 p.m. or whenever you need to think most people are gone from the office and then have it end you know, at a reasonable hour. So we do offer you the options for that, but no throttling directly. Perfect. We got another question from Ken and um, Dustin, if you're not, uh, I've, I've uh, definitely answered this one before, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw it over to you just in case you, you know about this one. Um, uh, Ken says, Microsoft SharePoint has a recycling bin where an admin could restore a deleted file within 90 days of deletion. So it's not gone forever immediately, you know, maybe after the 90 days. Is, is that correct? Uh, yeah, to my knowledge, that is correct. So think about the long term here. So for the use case that we're talking about uh, with this school, they have former students data. Do they only want to keep the data for 90 days? Uh, no, they might have a need for it, you know, a year on, you know, maybe you need somebody needs to get um, a very important paper that they wrote that they don't have any other copy of. Uh, so this protects you for beyond that. And that's generally, you know, like the use case for backup is, you know, looking for that longer period of data retention. Love it. I, I will mention one other thing, uh, which is essentially that that 90 days is specific to certain parts of the uh, M365 infrastructure. So for instance, SharePoint might last 90 days, but you might have other data uh, you know, in a different part of M365, for instance, people's inboxes, uh, and that data might only be available for 14 days or 30 days, depending on um, you know, how that specific information uh, is set up. Um, so just wanted to, to point that out as well. Um, We've got another question. Um, let's see here. Uh, what about backing up Azure AD? Dustin, can you jump in on that one? Yeah, let me scroll down a bit. Okay, yeah, I did see we have more, some more questions. So uh, Azure AD. So we don't have a solution for backing this up in particular. You could connect your NAS to the Azure AD, uh, but that would be the only capabilities that we have. Dave, would you have you heard about anybody attempting this before? No, that's 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 the exact same thing. I I would say is that yeah, you can join to the domain so that you know you're using all the users and permissions. But I'm not aware of any um, situation where we can actually back up that uh, Azure AD information. Yeah. Uh, any other questions you can see, Dustin? Uh, feel free to if you want to just read out the question uh, if you see anything that sticks out. Sure, uh, here's a good one, and uh, maybe you can show them this if possible. But uh, we have Andy is asking, how granular is the restore for Microsoft Exchange? So when you're backing up emails, uh, you can actually go and restore the individual emails, and there's filtering options so you can find them easier. Uh, you could download a copy of the email to the computer, save a lot of variety there. Dave, are you set up to demo that at all? Sure. Yeah. Let me um, go ahead and make sure I have everything uh, everything working yeah. on that. I think it'd be great to, to show people what the recovery process looks like. You know, like backing up your data is one thing. Actually, getting to it once you do that is another. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me um, let me bring that up. Uh, and so I'm just gonna uh, stop sharing my screen, and then I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. All right, and I believe I am showing the correct screen here, and I think I'm showing Dustin in the corner. Sorry about that. I think I can minimize. There we go. Um, can, Dustin, can you confirm that I'm, I'm uh, sharing here? Yes, you are live. Perfect. Okay. Um, so uh, on the left tab here, I am in our operating system called uh, Disk Station Manager, uh, and all I did was click into Active Backup for Microsoft 365 Portal. So that's where where you can actually recover information. Um, so from within here, I just navigated to this user, John S, um, and we can see all of the drive information here. Down at the bottom, we've got a timeline of all of the different backups that we've taken of, uh, of John's drive. And in the top right, we can switch our services. So for instance, um, I think the question was, was related to Exchange. So if we wanted to look at mail, uh, we could see all of the different uh, things that were in John's inbox. Uh, all of the the changes that were uh, that were saved once again on the timeline, and then we could just choose which emails we wanted, and we could either restore those directly to M365, 
or we could actually export to our local computer that we're browsing on. Um, so that's how you can very easily get um, all of this information um, back into a usable form, you know, from uh, being in the backup. So hopefully that helps uh, as far as that's concerned. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the demo. All right. I can keep going with some questions here. Give me a second to go back to me being live. All right. So uh, we have a question from Jeff. Do you back up Microsoft Teams? So what we could back up for Teams is not the Teams conversations themselves, but data uploaded to Teams, including wikis, and then also OneNote notebooks. So for the data that's shared, you know, like somebody sends a file on Teams, we could back that up, but the conversation itself would not be saved. So that's important to know going in. That is a pretty common one that we get asked. So thank you for bringing that up. And uh, you have anything to add on that regard, Dave? No, that's yeah. I, I think the, the the important part there is is that we do kind of back up the data, right? It's just not in in um, the format that would be ideal, uh, right? As as far as those conversations, am I am I understanding that correctly? Right. Gotcha. So I see a question about how fast is the restore uh, average 50 gigs per mailbox? Uh, it really depends depends on a number of factors. If you are if you just want a copy of the emails to save on your computer, that's just going to be you know how fast can it pull that data out of the NAS and save it onto your computer. So if you are local to your NAS, like you're in the same office as it, that's going to be pretty fast. Um, when you are storing back up into the cloud, that's going to depend on your upload speed because you are sending that data from you know, you like your location up to Microsoft servers. Um, so that really just, yeah, you do want to evaluate when you use an option like this, you know, like what are your internet connection speeds uh, for if you're going to do a cloud backup and restore. And and I'll I'll, I'll say uh, we got a, another question from Joe. Um, it related to how much time it took for the university to get their initial backup with their Synology unit. And um, I, I'm not 100% sure how long it took them specifically, but it, it's the same idea where, you know, if, if it, it depends very much on your internet connection, it depends very much on, um, you know, what, what kind of download speeds you can get from M365. Um, and it, it's really hard for us to know based on those factors. And, um, you know, it, it'll depend on your network as well, of course. Um, let me see if we got any other questions here. Yeah, while we're sticking on the subject of this school backup, um, there was a question earlier. It's like how much data was being backed up. I think it was actually about this. And uh, we have this use case on our website, so you can actually go see more detail about it. And uh, they had uh, 15 terabytes of data so far. And then thanks to the deduplication feature, it's actually only saved as seven terabytes. So uh, that's what it was for, you know, like those 18,000 accounts that they had. That's a, that's a great tie-in because the more students that you have, the more um, data that you have in general, it's very, very likely that you're going to get better and better deduplication uh, metrics um, because it's just more likely that some of the, the, the data there um, will be uh, will be the same as some of the other data. It's of course case by case basis as far as that's concerned, uh, because you know you could have wildly different data across your environment. <laughs> so I don't want to make a blanket statement there, but um, you know, for instance, if you had um, if you're using Active Backup for business and you have a whole bunch of Windows virtual machines, that you know the deduplication is going to um, do a lot of good stuff for you because it's the same operating system multiple times. So right. I think for a school, like an example would be like, you know, a hundred students download the same syllabus PDF file. You know, you only need one copy of it on the NAS. Much better example, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's see, we got a few uh, other questions here. Okay, um, okay, the, the, you know what, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, this is a, a question from Jason. Um, and uh, it's great because this is like basically a sales question. Um, <laughs> Jason says, what is your warranty offering if there is a hardware issue? Um, so the answer to this is it depends. Um, for our uh, kind of business class, enterprise class units, which would be our XS series, XS plus series, as well as anything kind of uh, higher end than that, um, it would be a five-year warranty 
which would include our Synology replacement service. And um, what that is, is essentially next business day replacements for your uh, for your device. So if anything goes wrong, essentially the next business day, you know, you, you've got the device ready to go. Um, you know, as long as everything gets processed through um, through support and you, you just go ahead and open up a ticket with us, um, we'll, we'll make that happen for you. Um, for any, any Canadians who might be watching, uh, that would end up being a um, most likely more like a, a, a three day. So I just want to set that expectation there. Um, but yeah, so we, we have a fantastic uh, warranty policy and that is um, included with the cost of the device. You don't have to pay anything extra for that five year warranty um, and uh, or for the uh, Synology replacement service for, for next business day. And I do want to clarify for Canada, it is still expedited. Like you are getting faster than our standard shipping, but we can't, uh, the way that UPS works for Canada, we just can't guarantee the next day like we can in the US. Um, anything else that, that you can see here, Dustin, on, on questions? It lot, looks like a lot coming through. Sure, yeah, let me just give me a second. Okay, yeah, uh, here's always a good one. Um, somebody is asking about what happens in the scenario of when you get ransomware uh, and you're seeking files. So, you know, like somebody has, I'm guessing the scenario they're talking about is somebody has their Windows computer, they open up something that they shouldn't have, it affects their computer, and they seek those files up to OneDrive. So the way that this would be handled with uh, your um, active backup is that you have a version history uh, enabled by default. So the version history is a point in time backup whenever the backup runs. So if you uh, have ransomware affect your files, that will be the latest version of those files. So all you need to do is go back to the previous version that was not infected. Of course, you want to do this after you've resolved whatever ransomware issue you had, you know, whether it was wiping the user's computer or whatever, so it doesn't spread again. But yeah, like that, that's our approach for a lot of our products you'll see even beyond this is we have version history built in. So all you need to do is go back in time and restore to a non-infected version of your data. It's a really nice kind of layered uh, uh, approach that we have where you're bringing all of the data back, you know, you've got versions within uh, the active backup software, but then something like snapshot replication is creating uh, those extra versions, those, those snapshots uh, of your shared folders. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions here. Yeah, a few more came in. Uh, actually, you know what, Dustin, if you want to take a look at those, I'm going to um, just mention something that um, Sarah said in the chat, uh, which is that we are raffling away a two-bay Synology device. Um, so there's a survey link uh, that she went ahead and uh, put into chat. So definitely feel free to go to that survey link um, and uh, reach out to the email if you have a, any questions about that. Um, but yeah, you can win a two-bay NAS, which can absolutely use all of the software that we've talked about so far. Yeah, the DS220 Plus is like our recommended entry-level NAS, so we'll run all of the different active backup software. If you've seen us talk about anything before in different presentations, uh, and we'll do all that. So that's a great option for people. So moving on to some more questions, uh, somebody's asking, uh, how is the data encryption for backup and restoration? So the way that encryption works for this software is you can store it on an encrypted shared folder, which is something that you set up on the Synology NAS itself. Uh, so shared folders are your basic like uh, directory structure that we have. So you can create multiple shared folders and then you get different settings for each one and different per permissions. So one of those settings is encryption. If you enable that, uh, unfortunately, the side effect is that you lose the version history capability of this software uh, because the way that our encryption works versus the way that the version history work uh, don't really get along very well. So fortunately, you would only have a single copy of the data. So depending on your use case, though, that might be OK. So I'm going to follow this up with another question that came right after this. Is there a backup uh, or replication service for redundancy? So now let's, you know, like take the same scenario. You actually can protect the data further by replicating it either to a, another Synology NAS. We have software called Snapshot Replication that will do this, or you can take it and back it up to a different cloud location from the NAS. So you can go from Active, so you can go from Microsoft all the way down to the NAS, and then from the NAS either to another NAS or to a, another cloud service. 
And uh, when you do a cloud backup, you can enable encryption for that. It's client side encryption, so you don't need you know any sort of support for the encryption at your cloud destination. That's great. Uh, I, I got one other question here um, from Christopher that says, uh, we always get the, and this is a quote, we don't need backup, we have retention. Uh, how do you how do you come back at that type of question? Dustin, you're, 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 you're laughing. I'll, I'll let you take this if you want. I, I, I can Oh, no, I was going to say that I uh, usually cover this one pretty well. It's kind of, you know, answered <laughs> by like what you presented earlier. So totally, totally. So, yeah. so I, what I'll say is, um, it depends kind of where that's coming from, right? It, it depends what the response would be because, you know, there's a lot of different um, th things that people say. For instance, when you're talking about RAID, right? RAID as a, a um, kind of a, a redundant array of, of inexpensive disks, which got changed to uh, independent disks. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. So the, the idea here is if you lose your data at a local location, right? If they say, hey, we have retention on the device that we have. Or if they say, hey, we have retention in Microsoft 365, you know, they, they're, they've got us covered, you know, they're, they're gonna keep all of our data for, uh, for 90 days. Um, it, it, it doesn't play in if you have some other type of issue, right? So it's, it's great that M365 is so reliable and that's why so many of us use it, but, if something were to go wrong with M365, if something that one of your users do, um, so for instance, imagine a user deletes a file and then um, one of your sysadmins clears the, uh, you, you know, the recycle bin for, uh, let's say, let's say SharePoint or, or, or something like that. What you're going to do is you're going to have 14 days to tell Microsoft support, oops, we didn't mean to do that. And if that 14 days passes and you don't, you know, immediately get to it and, and, and talk to Microsoft support, the data is going to be gone. So depending what your data is, you know, if you've got an, an, an email with an invoice or an email with, um, you know, some very important money related thing, you know, somebody's probably going to get fired over that. <laughs> so just having retention is not enough. Um, and, and once again, there, there, there's so many different things that we could talk about that could cause a device to go down that could cause M365 uh, to go down or your connection to M365 uh, to go down um, that, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into all of the different possible cases, um, but it's, it's really important to have your data protected with something, you know, and, and we even mentioned in this uh, in this presentation it doesn't have to be a local backup, you know, at least have some sort of cloud backup. We just want to make sure that your data is well protected. We want to make sure that you are covered in case something happens with your M365 data, because um, you really do need something to fall back on. And I think that we are uh, potentially running out of time. I think we got about two minutes here. Are there any other great questions that you see, Dustin, or, or should we go ahead and start wrapping up? Sure. Uh, one final one that I wanted to get to, uh, I had to look it up to double check uh, in the meantime, was, uh, let me scroll back. Give me one moment. So uh, Anonymous asks, does the backup of a user's mailbox also include their online archive mailbox? And yes, it does. Uh, if you check uh, specifications for this on our website, uh, we when we grow into the actual details of what this application can do, yes, we mention archive mailbox all throughout that. So that is supported. And um, let me check if there's anything else that came in. That wraps it up for questions for now. There were a couple ones that were might be a little bit too particular to get into at the moment. Uh, we'll try and follow up if we can. And uh, Dave, you want to go ahead and end this? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I, I just want to uh, mention one more time uh, before time runs out here uh, that we uh, we have a survey link uh, and you could win um, a two-base Synology device. So definitely go ahead, it's free to, to go ahead and fill out that survey. So definitely do that. And once again, if you have questions, uh, there is a, an email address that you can reach out to um, down below the, the survey link that uh, Sarah in chat uh, is posting. So just want to thank everybody for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time and Fantastic questions. This was really, really a fun time uh, seeing some of those questions and uh, being able to, to answer those for you guys. So from uh, myself and from Dustin, 
Thank you for joining. Have a great rest of your day.